Hey, Matt, thank you very much. Uh, along with Erica and Bridget, and I mean, really everyone, uh, you know, putting the time to, you know, get this together and get us to this point for the discussion. Um, I'll uh, open it up. Um, ben, I'll save my comments for last. I, you know, I have my, obviously my own feelings with this and I was part of the subcommittee, you know, so you kind of know where I stand with it. Um, I think we've all had plenty of discussions outside of this realm with residents, constituents, businesses uh, to get opinions. Uh, so, you know, with that, uh, Ben, you're up. All right. Well, thank you. Uh both to our Dustin and Bridget and staff, uh, Veronica and uh, Tom, everyone that worked on this, um, or Erica, excuse me. Um, you all did a, a great job of bringing forward, I think, something that uh, had a lot of input. I've talked with a lot of different uh, members that were involved uh, you know, during that time as far as uh, on the outside of that, and you know, as far as I did hear that you got that uh, the, the proposed ordinance was uh, brought to our police uh, chief and uh, lieutenant, and I, I guess they're there tonight. Uh, they are, uh, yes. If you have questions for them, please. Yeah, I'm just glad to hear that they had input on this yeah. as well. Um, you know, this has uh, had a long history in our city, um, as, as I think Veronica brought up, and uh, maybe your husband too, that uh, I was on the planning commission, this came to planning commission uh, early on. Now, what planning, the planning commission then was medical marijuana. Um, and I felt a lot differently at that time. Uh, for one, there, there was not a statewide uh, ordinance that uh, allowed for just general marijuana sales. Um, and I didn't feel that the, the medical marijuana at that time, um, I felt that that was almost a, a bit of a cloak and dagger. Um, you know, this idea that that was all just for medical and there was no other use. That was one of my biggest pet peeves. And uh, I, I pointed that out during the meeting and, and uh, pulled up weed maps. Uh, you know, one, one weed maps place had the a name of a, a marijuana strain with uh, all the wonderful medical uses. And another place had the same name, but with all the uses as far as couch flock. Uh, so I felt very strongly at that time that that wasn't uh, a place where we wanted to be. Um, but I look forward and, and, you know, eight years have gone by and the times have changed and our voters did vote. And, uh, you know, someone brought up the, the poll, you know, a poll is a poll, a vote is a vote. Our, our members did vote, our city camp you know, did vote in favor of the statewide ordinance. Now the conjecture is, did they vote for that in our city versus not? You know, it, it's, a, it's a, that's a bit of a harder line to follow. Um, but when I look at that and I recognize that since it is a statewide law now and that the statewide law allows for anything else to be brought forward, um, as far as our a citizen group, you know, could, if we voted this down tonight, bring forward their own ordinance. Um, I think that'd be a mistake for us to not do something tonight and then for someone else to bring forward an ordinance because then we're locked in with whatever that vote is and that's it. The council can't make any decisions going forward. I, I heard a lot of comments tonight about people that thought that we ought to, you know, if, if something doesn't work, change it later. Or if there, if we see something that doesn't work, to modify it. If we take an ordinance by the voters, and it, that would be it. There'd you, be no you're, change. You're talking about go going to, to the, the poll, right? Making it a, a, a ballot issue? Well, if you made it a ballot issue, or, or if someone else made it a ballot issue, yeah. you know, it would only take a, a gathering of signatures to bring it forward to our city council, and we'd have to put it on the ballot, um, or just accept it as is. And other cities are facing this. Uh, the city of Hemet's now facing their second uh, attempt by someone to put, you know, basically since the city council has said no multiple times, this group wants to let the voters decide. And, and, and the ordinance I would say is not what the city council would want. It's just what that outside group wants. I've seen this happen in other cities uh, up in the San Bernardino area where, you know, the, the local council said no. And then right away, the, uh, some other group decided to bring forward their own ordinance and pass it. And it's not favorable to the cities when that happens. It's not favorable to the residents. It's not favorable to the discussion. Uh, it, it's just a yes or no. And, and they don't realize a lot of the details that are in there. I don't want to see that happen to our city. I don't want to see our council get rolled in the future by someone bringing forward their own ordinance. I think we need to take the forward looking approach that allows for us to make changes to this later if we need to, recognizing that it is legal under the state you know, someone brought up the legality of as far as a federal uh, law versus state law. And we've had this conversation before, you know, it, the, with the, with the way the state has set this up, it is legal in our state. The product, as long as it's grown here, manufactured here, distributed here, doesn't violate state or federal law. It, it's all within the bounds of the state. So um, sort of just my reasoning as, as we go into this, but I feel that we still continue to move forward on this. Um, I know there's a lot of opposition and, you know, it's any one time you have a, an, a, an item like this, it's about a 50-50. You're going to have opposition, you're going to have people in support. It's just the way it is. 
And yep. uh, to the comments as far as my, you know, one district uh, not supporting it wholly, it was within the margin of error on that poll. But again, if you go back to the vote of the district, to the vote of the actual precincts uh, for uh, Prop 64, this, this district did pass that. So um, a couple of things I heard that I'd like to get a couple clarifications on. One was um, the, the places of worship comment versus churches. Um, I think that uh, makes some sense to, to put that in language in there as opposed to just churches it should be places of worship. Uh, Tom, is that okay if we were to add that as a part of the motion or? Sure, that, that's something that you could modify. Okay. Yeah, um, hey, real quick, on, on, okay, go ahead. I'll, I'll write that down. Yeah, I mean, I just, my, I'm making a suggestion. I'm not sure who's gonna make the motion, but that's just something I would suggest we put in there. Um, you know, one other thing I heard a lot of is the, the 600 versus 1,000 feet. Um, looking at the map, you know, my, my concern is less about the 600 versus 1,000 feet, although I would err on the side of 1,000 feet. But the parts of the map that I'm more concerned about are, are going up Mission Trail, uh, where you have commercial sites right in the middle of the neighborhoods, and same with along Bundy Cane. That's a bigger concern to me. Uh, when I see those sites, I think of what might go in there. Now, granted, this place, these places aren't supposed to have any um, you know, as far as the, it shouldn't be too obvious what it is and, you know, everything should be behind a, you know, an entry lobby. So we're not going to see product right out front, but I still, I, I wonder if anyone else has a, you know, I'd be interested in all your comments. If we think that's a good place for those businesses to be right there on mission trail, um, again, mixed in with the neighborhoods, I would feel better if we had some sort of a, even if it's a 150 feet from a house, you know, be in the commercial areas and more in the commercial districts. Um, as opposed to being along a, a residential area that happens to have commercial sort of dotted along it. So that's uh, another suggestion I might have or thought. I'd like to hear the, the, the council colleagues' thoughts on that. Um, I'm sure I'll think of a couple other things to say here right now, but I'll go ahead and pass it on at this point. Thanks, Ben. Uh, Joseph? All righty. I'm kind of getting this... Um sign on my computer saying uh, internet connection is unstable so if I go out uh, hopefully not all right I did prepare some remarks and uh, but first I want to address what Sheila Erlob had said she said that two of us were going to go against the will of our districts and she was referring to a non-binding survey of 900 people that was off by that was factually off by 17 percent on its prediction uh, when it came to measure AA. So that's, it's a, it's a sampling. It's, it's anything but uh, the will of the people. So with that, I'll get to my prepared rem remarks. So I've given this issue a considerable amount of my time. I've read dozens of emails, had phone calls, and several in-person meetings that were longer than an hour apiece. Anyone that asked got quality time from me on this matter. And when it came to Putting my thoughts together for tonight's meeting, I saw that I had several ways that I could go. Anyone that knows me is well aware that I don't shy away from giving opinions. But I believe the mandate behind my election win was to move away from the narrow personal views haughtily delivered that was commonplace before I took over this seat. So instead of dissecting every aspect of this agenda item, I'm going to acknowledge that both sides of this argument are comprised of good people with good intentions have made good points, and their concerns are worthy of being heard and deliberated on, which I'm sure all five of us have done for months. And I'm truly sorry that my vote tonight is likely going to disappoint a sizable part of the city and many of my friends. It's a fact that all five of us will be facing angry constituents when this is all over. This isn't something that we've uh, that any of us have entered into lightly. Understand this is an evenly divided issue with neither side anywhere near an actual majority. Mm -hmm. No matter which way this is voted on, a third will be a happy, another third will be angry, and the final third will be glad it's finally over with saying, now let's turn the page. Um, it's my desire to not add any more waves to this already tumultuous situation and to lead by example in helping calm the waters in the wake of tonight's decision. So I will tread as lightly as I can, trying my best to avoid further roiling those that have a different opinion while still giving you the logic behind my vote. A common misconception I've heard regarding the motivation behind my support of regulating commercial cannabis in Wildemar is about money, that it'll be a cash cow 
of new taxes rolling into the general fund. That's not it. Though from the email comments, uh, emails and comments I've read, it seems that many people recognize that commercial cannabis will indeed come with additional revenues to the city, which would be used to boost our historically anemic budget. No, my motivation isn't about money to the city. My motivation is long-term, the end of the unregulated market and the criminal element behind it while supporting the liberties of others. Is that unrealistic? I'm not suggesting that the unregulated market will go away tonight or tomorrow or next week or next year. It could take decades to kill off the unregulated market and the misapprehensions associated with the cannabis industry. But we need to start that journey. Let's uh, look at the history of prohibition. It ended in 1933 after 14 years uh, during which a thriving unregulated market took root and flourished. I was born 31 years after prohibition was repealed. By the time I was learning about prohibition in school, more than 40 years had gone by. And whatever stigmas that were attached to alcohol consumption and the alcohol industry had been brushed aside a long, uh, long beforehand, uh, along with any remnants of that black market. Now, when I say black market, I'm not talking about the still that Ma Pa had in Appalachia, clandestinely making bathtub gin and selling mason jars of shine behind the five and dime. No, I'm talking about the industry that imported booze every which way imaginable from all ports of entry that buoyed organized crime to previously unimaginable heights, supplying the countless speakeasies at the time. That level of black market doesn't exist. And that's what I'm referring to. The prohibition of cannabis took a different route. Though today it's legal in one form or another in 33 states, it's still inexplicably, <laughs> inexplicably on the Schedule One list of drugs that declares there are no medical uses for it. We can't make a comparison of the timelines that happened after prohibition was repealed in 1933 to what will happen after the federal restrictions on cannabis were removed because we haven't even got to the 1933 mark yet. It's still contrary to federal law in all forms and the reasons for that are purely political. Whatever stigmas were hanging on to alcohol consumption in the 1930s had been entirely erased by the time I came of age, other than the stigmas associated with drunkenness or alcoholism, which rightfully remain intact, as will the stigmas of being a stoner or burnout. Uh, I don't know what the views on cannabis consumption will be in the year 2055, but I'd like to think that the fear mongering will be long since eliminated by then. And it starts by recognizing that any of the negative aspects of the commercial end of it are completely man-made, not unlike the days of Al Capone and prohibition. The alcohol in and of itself wasn't the problem. It was the approach where one group of American people tried to control another group of American people, restricting the liberties they disliked because they discovered they had the power to sway the votes of elected officials that were more worried about re-election than doing the right thing. I'm sorry, but few things are as un-American as that. Liberty and justice for all, and that especially applies to the things that you find rather distasteful. In the emails that were in opposition to the ordinance, the overriding theme was about public safety. But the tone of one email really stood out for me. It says, thank you for those who have the future of our city in their best interests as they consider this issue. I know that my eyes have been opened as to who sincerely stands behind the citizens they represent. Now let's think about that for a moment. Those who have the future of our cities, city and in, uh, in the best interest as they consider this issue. And my high eyes have been opened as to who sincerely stands behind the citizens they represent. I can't speak for the other members of the council but I'm offended that anyone would think I would be in favor of anything that doesn't have the best interests of the community in mind on any level. Seriously, if I, for even a second, thought I was inviting a bad element into town, increasing crime, I would have nothing to do with this process. And I'm confident that no one else on the council would either. I hope I was good to my pledge and didn't add any more waves to this already tumultuous situation while still giving you the logic 
behind my vote. All right, thank you, Joseph. Well said. I like the uh, the phrasing you used about selling mason jars behind the five and dine, or however you put it. That was pretty good. Um, uh, Marcia? Well, I still believe the survey. We believed it two other times. Um, I would have liked to have seen it gone to a vote, not to vote on the ordinance, just a, a simple vote of yes or no, do you want it in your city? I voted to legalize marijuana. I did not vote to have it in our city. The emails, the information we got tonight were not 50-50. They were two to one against it. Those are the people that voted for us. I applaud the work that staff has done. It was excellent. The ordinance, in my opinion, is a good ordinance, but I still feel like I need to stand behind the people that elected me. And that's, that's about how I feel. Thank you, Marcia. I hope to sway you here in about five minutes. Uh, <laughs> Bridget. Yeah. So Marcia and I are on the same page. Um, so, cause maybe all the callers um, maybe not know the whole background and we've heard about um, history before. So I'll do my own little history. Um, we hired a company to do a survey, Wildemar, a register of voters. It's a poll and this is what national polls do. Polls, <laughs> polls, they do polls for everything, president, you name it. They do polls, they know how to do the research and these polls tell you what is gonna happen. So we hired the company to say, hey, do you want Parks and Wildemar? If we put it on the ballot, will the voters vote yes? Will it pass? Yes, they said, put it on the ballot. It will pass, it passed. We hired the same company to do a survey and said, if you put measure AA on the ballot, well, what's it called measure AA then? But if you put it on the ballot for roads, police, fire, homeless, um, will it pass? They said, yes, it put it on the ballot, it will pass, it passed. Same company, three times now, said, we're gonna go ask, we're gonna ask about cannabis. The question was, do you generally support or oppose allowing cannabis businesses within Wildemar city limits? These pollers came back, these survey respondents, district one was 52% no, opposed. District two was 47, that's the only one. Dustin's district was in favor. District three was 60% opposed. District four was 54% opposed and District 5 was 60% opposed. They said, if you put this on the ballot, it's not gonna pass. So to say, you know, not, we don't believe this one now because it doesn't go with what our, we wanna see. That's the answer. I like that one earlier about fishing for an answer. We believed it the first time, it passed. We believed it the second time, it passed. Now all of a sudden, we don't believe what they say. Um, we do have to vote. Yes, for the state, so for the callers, the statewide election said, do you want recreational marijuana? Do you think it should be legal in the state of California? Whole state of California, whole state, not Wildemar. And they 51% to, I don't remember exactly, said, yes, we want it. But when you ask poll register voters in the city of Wildemar, do you want this? They said, no. This is the survey we paid $38,000 for, and they said no. So my district is District 4, 54% are opposed. It doesn't have to do anything to do with whether I like marijuana, don't like marijuana, I think it brings crime, any of all that. Revenue, that. My residents in my district do answer in the privacy of their own home to the polar that we hired three times to say, no, we do not want it in our community. Okay, Bridget, thank you for your comments. And I will echo my comments to Marcia. I hope to sway you here uh, now. <laughs> All right. Um, obviously, you know, we've seen the historic uh, votes we've done at the council with this. And obviously, Ben and, and, and Joseph, myself, are of similar mindsets. Um, 
I had every intention of actually creating like a very thorough PowerPoint uh, to outline explicitly the arguments and pro cons, all that stuff, right? Uh, but then COVID happened. Uh, so uh, bear with me. I'm going to touch on a couple of things you uh, you each just kind of mentioned. Uh, I'm going to explain my logic. And I'm going to ask I'm going to ask uh, Lieutenant Ken a couple of questions uh, to further belay some you know misconceptions or fears. Okay, so um, just because it's fresh in my mind, the the survey, as I recall, uh, was really for Measure AA, and uh, the preponderance of the survey. Well, the proponents of the questions of the survey were related to Measure AA. So if you go back and look at it, there's probably, and I'm going off memory right now, nine questions maybe related to marijuana and 50 related to Measure AA. So just just, just for the, the context of, for the, for the sake of the, the group here, um, Bridget, I know you pointed out the percentages. Uh, I, Joseph, you know, you, you pointed out the... Um, uh, that within the margin of error Ben did. Uh, I would also point that out that, I mean, they're very small percentages that are opposed or in favor, basically. So there's really no clear one way or the other, right, with, with the survey and that, in my eyes, was focused on measure AA and a 1% sales tax and not focused on marijuana. So even with the, knowing that, and you have, you know, a, a small portion of the survey focused on that, you're still within a very close margin, okay? Yeah. But I, I just want to point that out, you know, some to, something to consider. Um, the voting on marijuana, um, you know, taking it to the poll and put it on the ballot, you know, Wildemar, do you want this? Uh, I don't agree with that logic. Because in my eyes, uh, we all were elected to have to, you know, unfortunately make these hard decisions. And if that's something we're not willing to do or we don't want to do or, you know, whatever, then I would, I would, I would argue that everything goes to the ballot. Next time, you know, the hospital wants to do something with their signage, uh, okay, it's outside the, you know, outlined ordinance, let's put it to the ballot. You know, and that's, that, you know, that kind of thinking, that's where it kind of leads to in, in my eyes. Um, I look at marijuana kind of like COVID, the whole COVID thing, right? It's it's turned into a partisan thing, and I you know I don't think it necessarily used to be. Uh, somebody had mentioned earlier one of the uh, public comments, choice, that is a thing, and that's something I, I think that we all tend to forget. Uh, that and that's just reality, and you can relate that to masks or going to a, a dispensary you know so uh if you don't like the government telling you you have to wear a mask i mean do you want the government telling you you can't you don't have this here right um and, and vice versa the whole thing's muddy and, and speaking to COVID, i will analogize it with uh there's lots of information out there that support one side of the the argument or the other right and you see it all over social media and that's kind of how i look at marijuana too you can get a survey in colorado and you can pull the good or bad out of it. And, you know, both sides will give you a, a, um, an authored and vetted research, you know, paper pro or against. And on both sides, that look very valid or appear very valid. And it's really up to us to kind of have to, to parse through those things, right? And, and figure out what is best for our community. So this is where we'll get into where my thinking is. If you've noticed, I've never talked about money with it. Sales tax, that is probably the furthest thing from my my thought. I will say that I felt it more incumbent upon us now, given our current situation, to continue the process that we started about a year ago uh, for the simple fact that our economy is in a terrible dump now. And I wanted us as a city to be, if we do go forward with this, I wanted industry to be ready when we do open back up and things are back to normal because people will need to work. Uh, and I'm not talking about sales tax and it being the messiah that everybody thinks it is as far as tax revenue. It's, it's not. In my eyes, it's not. Um, anyway, if we recognize that it's here already, that's my biggest, my biggest piece with this. It's here and we see it all over social media with these illegal grows already. 
And I feel like every time they, the sheriff's department goes out and closes one down, it adds more weight to the argument that we need to regulate it. Because right now, there's no incentive by anyone other than just them being good people to go and, re and find these things and, re and report them, right? We don't know about it until, you know, well, pretty much after the fact when a house blows up, you know? Um, I'd much rather regulate it at, at the very minimum, a retail place has it and they get wind of a possible grow house somewhere. I'd rather get there and shut them down before a house blows up. I think that's part of the, the public's benefit to this is being able to identify the, the people that aren't playing by the damn rules and that are putting other people's lives and safety at risk because they don't care. Um, there's every incentive for a business to want to report those things for the simple fact that they don't want them as competition. And I'm okay, whatever the reason is, I don't care as long as we are getting ahead of it and shutting them down ahead of time. Um, also, um, I spent a lot of time talking about this. Um, you know, it was pointed out earlier that states that have, that have allowed this have an increase in, in uses from, from children, right? Or from kids, teenagers, whatever. The biggest problem we face as a society is the choice piece. It's parenting and education will go the furthest to limit things. If you've noticed smoking is illegal, I'm a smoker, but uh, I wanna say I've read recently that smoking is on a decline uh, with teenagers because of education and parenting. Uh, that's, that same logic needs to be applied with not only marijuana, opiates, cocaine, all those other things that we don't want people doing, right, that are bad. Um, and I can tell you this, I told this to a resident yesterday, but kids are gonna, people are gonna choose to do whatever they're gonna do. I would prefer if they do choose it, for them to at least get it in a manner that's semi-safe, right? So the way it's structured now, the way it's grown and all that is cradle to grave. Uh, there's an age limit to get in. It's relatively, you have to go to site, you have to be deliberate with it, right? If you know you're gonna buy it, you have to be deliberate with it and go get it. If a kid, if a teenager is going to get marijuana, I much, I would prefer all night and day that they go and steal it from their parents who bought it from a legal dispensary than to go to the drug dealer in the corner and buy it that way. I would prefer that all day long. Now, do I encourage that? No. But if the choice is going to be made, I'd rather it happen that way. Um, I, again, it's, a, it's a, a safety piece. And I have three little girls. And obviously, they're going to get their little butts with a the belt. They're going to get all their stuff broken. And they're going to be grounded for years if I ever saw them doing this, right? And that's me as a parent, you know, being a parent, uh, that'll be probably one of the <laughs> biggest things they regret. Um, my question to Lieutenant Kent, um, there was the, uh, the comment about, uh, have you noticed, because Elsinore is a neighboring city, right? They have, they've had this ordinance in place for about a year or whatever it is, and it's been legal in the county for time frame, right? Have you noticed uh, an increase in crime near dispensaries or you know other marijuana type activities? They've had mar marijuana dispensaries since. Hold on, hold on. Are you, is he on? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Since about October was the first one okay. that opened up, and we have not. They're in an industrial area. And we have not in, seen an increase in crime. It's about the same as it's been. Okay. Um, have you noticed an increase in? Illegal grows and stuff. There has been an increase in illegal grows. But mm -hmm. That's because there's been more reports of it. As we posted on social media, it's been reported. We've even had one of the dispensaries report, a, a, as you were talking about, yeah. the old customer, whether it was out of the good of their heart or because they don't want the competition. We Whatever the, yeah. About it. Um, but yes, as it seems like every time we post a illegal grow on social media we get two more phone calls and we go investigate them some are some aren't but people start calling in more suspicious activity just like anything else duis when you start advertising hey look out for drunk drivers yeah for these you give them a lot more phone calls mm -hmm. and i think as a council thank you i think as a council that's what we need to be concerned with is what is right the fact that there's not an increase in crime, but they're able to go out and get people 
that are doing things illegally is of utmost importance, right? Uh, I've said this from day one, if the federal government would kind of get their act together and decide to enforce the laws they have, this would be a really easy thing, right? But it's not, and we're here to, we're, we're forced to deal with California. And all the flaws that we've seen in the last three months, we're dealing with California. Uh, and I'm not a fan of Newsom right now, by any means. But this is what, we're, this is what was passed statewide. My, my th thinking is for us as a city, how do we how do we do it responsibly and what's good for the kids? They're going to do whatever they're going to do. What's good for the public? They're going to do whatever they're going to do. Uh, I'd prefer they don't buy drugs from a drug dealer. I think that's how this became a gateway drug, if it is a gateway drug, because that person doesn't care who he's selling to, doesn't care the age he's selling to, and has other things that he's selling. Um, and she's, so I'm not leaving women out to you, women deal drugs also. But um, yeah, so... That's my spiel. I hope I swayed somebody. I really love a 4-1, 5-1 vote. Yes, Marsha. Sorry, you haven't swayed me. Okay. And if we've done a survey, do you want the hospital to be made larger? And they said no, I would feel the same way. My decision is not being made about whether it's good for the community, bad for the community, good for the kids, bad for the kids. Everybody in this community knows where they can get it if they want it, legal or illegal. I am voting the way I'm voting because I was elected to listen to my constituents and 60% of mine said no. So that's where I'm coming from. So that's why you haven't changed. The ordinance is good. Damn. I don't have a strong feeling either way about whether we have cannabis or we don't have cannabis, but my constituents do. And I was elected to represent them as were you, Joseph. Which I am. Thank you. Thank you, Marsha. So, thank you. And I actually agreed. Ben made good points. Joseph, you made good points. And, and thank you for the callers that said we're in a tough position because we are. And it really is a polarizing subject. And it is 50-ish one mm -hmm. way or the other. Yeah. So, it's, it's definitely not like 75%, 25%. So since to me, if I can count correctly, it sounds like it's three yes votes. So um, can we get the thousand foot then? I mean, oh, I know, like, now we come to the, the, the bargaining table. <laughs> yeah. Is there a fourth vote? Uh, well, I'm not saying that, but no. I'm saying, <laughs> I think a thousand foot. You heard, you received emails, you received uh, letters from an attorney, you received uh, 150 people signed a petition that there is strong opposition. So if we could do the thousand foot vote, at least would help, you know, and, and Ben, actually, I'm fine. I'm fine with yours, 100 feet from a resident, totally, whatever. I'm totally fine with that, too. Well, I'm fine with a thousand feet too. You're know, looking at the two maps. Um, Figure three I, has the thousand foot sensitive uses buffer area. Yeah. My concern with a thousand feet, I'm not necessarily overly opposed to it. Um, I definitely wanted to have the discussion as a council about that. Um, part of me doesn't like the idea of treating it differently than other places that are, you know, contentious like liquor stores and things like that right um i'm not necessarily opposed to it my the other concern is the um matt and can you remind me the thousand feet and the 600 feet are we you know out of our our, our commercial zones uh are we pricing people out not pricing people out but basically we're we making it so there's squeezing yeah we're squeezing them out just by by creating a, a bigger distance well, when you look at the maps, um, I mean, the answer is no. Um, I, don't remember, I don't remember, and I can't pull it up right now. My computer is like basically dead, so I'm not going to mess with it because I want to keep the video going. But I'm looking at both maps, Dustin, and I, there's very few zones or sites that get bottled out because of that. Right. I mean, it really does not make any huge difference. There's a few. It's, to me, it's, a, it's, in, the, it's in the margins. Um, you know, and the other point that I bring up as far as the residential, you know, I look along Mission Trail, you know, my thought is, is that, you know, if we say 
you can't be closer than 100 feet door to door, front door to the dispensary, front door to the house. That would eliminate some of these, there's these little spotty, you know, small pieces of commercial along Mission Trail that, you know, I don't want a line of these going down Mission Trail on, on little small quarter acre plots. I don't think that'd be appropriate there. You know, the, the hideaway location right now could turn right into one of these tomorrow. And I, I don't see the hideaway building being place we all want one of these popping up in. You know, I think we all yeah, want that's, more yeah, not a bad, yeah. You know, place. And so when you look down Mission Trail and you get closer to Corridon, there's a couple larger parcels. That makes sense if one of those developed and, and one of those turned into, you know, but it would have to be where there's not a residential use, you know, right there. Hey, hey Tom, if we did that, added, let's say, 100 feet, you know, from a residence or, a, a, you know, a house, um, could we, do we have the, the authority option to modify that? Uh, not the ordinance itself, but make us exceptions to that, to that rule uh, with the development agreement and all that, all those things that go along with the application process. Let's say, and Ben, I'm, I'm gonna use the hideaway just because it's in my head, but let's say the hideaway, somebody really wanted to open there and they got letters from everybody within a hundred feet. Would that be something we can uh, proceed with? No, if you've got language in the ordinance that provides distance requirements, you can't contract around that okay. through a development agreement. Hmm. Well, I had a thought on the thousand foot thing. I had it already written down anyway. Part mm -hmm. of it is that uh, I'm in favor of the draft ordinance as presented. You guys worked on it. It's in there for a reason. But I, I was curious uh, if a compromise to 1,000 feet would get a 5-0 or 4-1 uh, vote, if that would, to willing to change it from 600 to 1,000. If that, you know, hope I hope. You know, show any interest in that, or is it, is it just <laughs> you want to change it to change it? Because to me, I'm like with Dustin, that I think that these adults type, uh, you know, retail businesses, whether it's a liquor store or vape place or whatever, uh, cannabis that those should be treated the same. I get it. Cannabis is new on the scene. It's a big boogeyman. Uh, so, you know, if we had some willingness on the other side to so to show some uh, compromise, then that that would make sense. We maybe we would all compromise a little. Yeah. Oh, I, my vote can't be bought like that. <laughs> I just want to make it better. If you have a lot of opposition. You had emails, you have a lot of opposition. So, like I said earlier, if you're going to shove it down our residents' vote, our throat, then let's give them a little bit more in thousand. This is different. I know. I understand it's a business, but it is different. It's a new category for Wildemar. It's never been here before. It is different. I, like I respected the people that yeah. uh, emailed in and the ones I talked to in person, uh, that their, their opinions are completely valid. Um, at the same time, let's not confuse a couple of dozen people that with a big public outrage like what we saw, though I know this is bigger in front of the uh, county building, but proportionally, I mean, that's, that's still not proportionally like any level of outrage. And at one point I was checking how, num how many people were viewing this and it was, I think, at, was it 10 or something? So let's... Let's not be swayed by uh, people that are writing in. That's not how we do things any more than if you remember that uh, day at the county building after lunch. It's like there were like 30 consecutive calls from people who like worked at Paris Unified School District or something. So I, I would have liked to have seen a, a larger uh, outpouring from the community than what we actually did get. And if you notice, I mean, over time, I know the lot, the, what is it, was it? 12, 2010, 12, 2012, when uh, cannabis was discussed previously. Am I, am I, yeah, it, you know, the, 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 if you notice over the last decade, the, 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 tur the turnout from the public has significantly lessened. And that, if you consider that, I would say our, the communication on the city's behalf has significantly increased as far as being able to watch the meetings, attend the live stream. I mean, it's everything's increased, but the the outcry of you know of opposition 
one way or the other has significantly decreased. And that, to me, is indicative of a, really a, a cultural shift that's just happening in our society. If you look at Prop 64 being any indicator of that, that's just the reality that we, we are living in. So, Dustin, yes. I counted 20 phone calls against, and I mm -hmm. counted 10 in favor, or four, mm -hmm. and of those 10 that were in favor, mm -hmm. two admitted they didn't even live mm -hmm. in Wildemar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I kept count on the calls. Mm -hmm. Me too. Well, I can give you some another anecdotal thing. So a couple weeks ago when this first was coming out, uh, I think Bridget had shared like, hey, your comments are welcome. And I at the same time, I happened to tell everybody, I ran out of sriracha sauce. Where do I get it? One didn't get any comments, and the other one got 50 people telling me where I should buy sriracha sauce. Kind of tells you that one is not as important as it may have been in the past. <laughs> Uh, I, I, so I, I, I got the illustration. I wrote down terrible comparison. One fifty <laughs> people spoke joke. about. Oh, okay, I, I'm sorry. I agree. He's saying that fifty people commented sriracha sauce, but only one person commented on this. Is that what you're saying, Joseph? Yeah, it's nobody. Right, or yeah. a very small number. Yeah. Um, I wrote down everybody that that called in today. Uh, that we had the Zoom meeting. I'm, I'm counting sixteen, and I'm counting eight and eight. Basically, what we're getting at is, is probably very similar to the, the poll, where it's 51-49, right? So nobody's going to be happy with this. And it's much like the COVID thing. You have a poll percentage that, hey, stay home, don't do this, don't do that. And then you have a whole other group that's do this. And that's unfortunately, and I'm not saying the two are related. or no, but I'm We pointing, didn't take a survey on the COVID either. You know, <laughs> you're hearing social media. Oh, no, I'm just going Let off of... clarify, though. Yeah. Uh, Tom, we can't add in Ben's suggestion of 150 feet tonight. No, we can. Yeah, yeah. No, you could add in the, the the suggestion of 150 feet from from residential use. We'd, we'd need to flesh that out a little bit and get some uh, clarification. We could read into the record uh, the language that, that the majority of the council would agree on and, and what uh, section of the ordinance that would go in. I'm not necessarily, I think I'd like to keep the 600 feet and if anything, we can adjust if we think we need to, because um, the, you know, the intent would be to come back to this, you know, in a year and kind of reassess because nobody's perfect uh, and his staff and Erica and the Tom and, you know, everybody's done a great job, but I'm sure there's going to be something that, you know what, we should have thought about this. Okay. We're going to attack that. Um, I, I'm not, I, 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 I think I'm cool with the, the 150 feet though from the, you know, a residential house. I mean, it's... It's not a necessarily a deal breaker. And again, in the year, if we think that it's not necessary, we can remove that. And I think that's fair. I'd like to um, give you this thought on that too, because I, I think that makes sense that if there's neighborhoods, so let's pick on the, the convenience store across from the uh, post office. I, they're very close to a um, neighborhood, and I'm sure that if we could redesign that, I don't know that we want that kind of use that close to a neighborhood. So I definitely see that we wouldn't want um, the cannabis store right in a neighborhood. So like Ben said on Mission Trail, but as an example, and not that anybody's looking to put a cannabis store uh, near the Rite Aid, but there's some of those uh, stores, some of those buildings that are right next to that artificial wall and so 100 feet there is a house like 100 feet but they can't they don't use those stairs so somehow we need to make it reasonable and not one of these as the crow flies where there's it really takes a quarter mile to get there but oh look it's 100 feet technically so if that could be put in well, well joseph you know I, I think you and i discussed this earlier and i, I thought about 250 feet earlier um, I, I did some quick google maps measurements and you know, the places we talked about where that where the crow flies, you know, if you go down to 100 feet or 150 feet door to door, you get away from a lot of that. You 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 don't run into the issue as much. So that's why I thought just, you know, I, mean, I think oh, it makes it a lot oh. easier that way to, to just settle on 150 feet. Sure. And, and that way it takes away all these little pocket, you know, uh, commercial zones that are along Mission Trail um, that would otherwise be, you know, to the average person driving by, that's a, that's a residential area. Why would I want a commercial use right next door? Right. Um, you, you know. Yeah. 
my district, we've had the hideaway, uh, although it had a fire a couple years back, but I can tell you, I got plenty of complaints about having that kind of use in the neighborhood. Uh, there were people that were not happy with the parking. There were people not happy with the, uh, the people that were there at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't see that as a use. And, and as much as uh, you know, if the, if the current owner of the hideaway wanted to open a bar back up, I think he'd have a permitted right that I'm not sure it might've expired by now. I, I don't know, but you know, I don't think that we need to bring another type of use there that I would be, you know, mm -hmm. causing an impact, a direct impact to that neighborhood. Yeah, that's um, fair. It's that, a fair that's thought. That's not what I want to do. Yeah. So that's why I feel strongly that we had at least that provision. Uh, okay. you know, 600 versus 1,000. At the end of the day, I'm not seeing a huge difference to the two maps, but if we can get the 150 feet in there, I think there's a big part of the map that changes that way. You know, a lot of these little red dots on the Mission Trail Cordon side that Bridget and I are representative of go away. Um, and I think that's a big help. And, and especially when uh, the, the letter talked about the uh, environmental justice area, yeah, I think she's specifically referring to that area of uh, Northern Wildemar that's an uh, impoverished area. And, and I don't think they're going to want that right there in their backyard. So that's, I, I, that's fair, right? That's, that's fine. And like you said, we can, or we can hit it up in a, in a year. And well, you know, on that thought, Dustin, one thing we can't go back in a year, if, if, you know, we see a bunch of use come in, once it's here, it's a little hard to get rid of, right, Tom? I mean, it's not like, I mean, if yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. I don't know that we could change the, the rules on the person that came in the first year. No, they'd be grandfathered. They want one there. So that's why I really want to make sure we get at least this part right as yeah. far as uh, keeping it out of the residential zones. You know, that, you know, especially if you have a residential zone in my district, again, that had a, a legal operation that absolutely drove us all nuts for years because it was at that point the, the district attorney wasn't doing what he's doing today and, and neither was our sheriff at the time in going in and shutting these places down. That, that finally has changed and I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud of the fact that when we do see an illegal operation, it's usually a few weeks and uh, we get a pat on the back from our, our sheriff's department. Don't worry, we're on it. And, and we're reading about the fact that they're being shut down. And I think that's a, a great thing from, from both the district attorney and, and our, our sheriff. Thank you for doing that. Um, but, you know, at that same time, I think them providing some sort of legal opportunity makes sense. So, all right. So, well, um, so did we figure out the places of worship part that's in there? Yeah, that, that's, you know, that was one suggestion I would make uh, that we call it places of worship instead of churches. The second would be the 150 foot, uh, for, you know, residential. And oh, then that's right. I need to... uh, if I'm not hearing any movement on, you know, getting another member to go to a thousand, I'd say we leave it at 600. By going to the, the 150, we've picked up a lot of those areas. I think Bridget and I are concerned. Hey, Erica, okay. with the places of worship, vice, the verbiage is in the ordinance right now. Does that, uh, my concern is the definitions of, of that and what, you know, what, what does that classify? And th this is the same thought. I've had these, these discussions with daycare. So my, my thinking is, okay, and we call it a place of worship. Uh, what what defines that, I guess? And with that, you know, could they just, could I call City Hall a place of worship and limit, you know, 600 feet around me? You know what I mean? It's... So you, you have flexibility to define a place of worship however the city feels appropriate in the ordinance. You're not beholden to, to follow any given definition. Um, in this particular case, if you're going to add places of worship to the sensitive uses that are set back 600 feet from cannabis businesses, um, home-based churches might be something that you want to think about. Because if someone has a home-based church, is that going to qualify as a place of worship? Mm -hmm. Or is it going, are you considering more uh, standalone facilities? Uh, you know, where that operate out of, and that's the sole use. It's not a church operate out of a house or a school, even though that example doesn't really matter because schools are already subject to yeah. the, um, the separation. But if you had like a, a, some other, you know, open industrial space where a church comes in for a few hours on a Sunday, that you could exclude something like that if you chose to go that route, but you really have the liberty to do whatever you want. That's, that's and there the was, if I'm going back to the, the subcommittee piece, I want to say we, we talked pretty extensively about this with, with churches. And so it'd be, although maybe not an invalid point, I, I think I'd prefer to leave the verbiage as is within in the ordinance, just because we've definitely thoroughly gone through that with California. And if I'm, if I'm wrong, just shake your head yes or no. But we went through those pieces. Am I, you know, am I wrong there, Matt? We did. And it was pretty extensive, I, I want to say. Yeah, we had a very extensive discussion, yeah. and it was determined not to put churches in. Remember, this is a 
recommendation from the planning commission. Yeah. So that's something that's in the ordinance now. Well, so how about if, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Joseph. Okay, I was gonna say, well, why, why not add mosques, synagogues, temples? instead of places of worship. Well, we just don't add anything and leave the ordinance as is. That was the recommendation from the planning commission. But the ordinance recommendation from the planning commission just says churches, right? Yeah, That's so basically I would say we just move forward with the ordinance as is and dis not disregard, but not implement that recommendation from the planning commission. Not bring, not put in churches at all? That's the ordinance right now does not have churches. The planning commission mean, wanted the, to the maps we're looking at both maps that are in the packet have churches in them right right i think that was for the sake of discussion am i wrong that's correct okay that was just to paint the picture if that's what you do this this is what we do but um ah, damn it i mean well i think we should put places of worship and leave, and put, I'm leave leaving it in this there meeting sorry what how did it work with the uh vape shop somehow i thought the churches aren't in that they're not a sensitive use I'm just surprised about that. Because you have students. Remember, it's not just Sunday morning church. Oh, yeah. And, and the schools, the churches that are schools, like Cornerstone, they're a school. And they fall into that definition. The Lutheran high school, the Lutheran church off of uh, Wildemar Trail, it's a school. <laughs> you know, and that's, you know, they, they fall into that. Um, and that was a big concern also. And we had, we had a lot of discussion, and, you know, back and forth with those. I'm trying to pull the map up now. I like the term, the places of worship. Well, even though beyond, beyond the term, the question is, do we include it at all? That's what's yeah. being discussed now. Do we include right. places right. of worship right. at all? Right. And I, I err on the side of no, be just for the simple <laughs> fact that we had these discussions with the attorneys and staff and everything else. I know, but we don't agree, Mayor. No, no, I, I know. Oh. No, no. But if you're not uh, going to vote for it. <laughs> no, but my, my thinking you know, is of, uh, how it's written has been vetted legally and everything else, and I would prefer to keep it that way. And then we, if, if no, no joke, I mean, becomes an issue or whatever, we can add that, you know, that in. But well, I was going to say that in the spirit of compromise, even though it will not get, uh, garner any other votes, yeah. you know, if we're going to keep it at six hundred, but I would see mentioning churches and then since some people are sensitive to the word church then i don't know if we can afford the extra 22 characters or not to say mosques and gogs and temples because if that makes mm. people happy i mean that's that's fine to me church is the word but if, if the other ones need to be in there i'm not offended by the other words well i'm thinking i'm not necessarily concerned with any of the words my concern is where does the 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 you know those things stop right so uh, I'm an ordained minister through an online thing, and <laughs> the Church of Nig is a you know technically a thing when I marry people if I choose to you know, uh, and what do we call a place of worship? And you know if we if we say well, okay said, Christianity moss and this, what else you know where does it stop and where does it start? Well, I mean those those are actually real terms for recognized religions, and that mm -hmm. would, the temple part I believe which should take care of the the Buddhist part um that's in town so i like i said so i could see as a because to me the churches make sense actually i mean i was kind of surprised that's not in there so add the churches and then that's the the compromise on the 600 feet it shows goodwill even if the other side doesn't want to vote in favor of it even even though you're not going to get my vote i don't think churches should be in there or house of worship i don't know what they worship they could be worshiping the devil. I don't know. I think that's every person's personal feeling as to what they worship or whether it's a church or a synagogue or whatever it is. See, look at that, Dustin. You got Marcia's support for that one argument. <laughs> Not my vote, but my support. I, I didn't say vote. vote. I didn't say <laughs> vote. <laughs> I was very, very clear on that. <laughs> well, it, you know. It could mean anything. Anything could be a church. As yeah. Dustin said, he's ordained. He could call his house a church. Sure, but the, well, you're not going to be able to put something in a neighborhood, so that's you're done anyway, right? Well, with 150 feet, but if you call yourself a place of worship in a house, then that's 600 feet, right? So it, it's just one of those things. I'd prefer to leave it as is. That's my personal. I'm not. That's my personal desire with it. To leave out churches, period. To, 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 yeah, the, to, to, to the ordinance as presented. 
in it, with okay. additions of the yeah, 150. The record reflect that Marsh and I swip, swapped on that one, but it's it doesn't change anything. So. Okay. Even though we're all not going the same direction, we're still making some sausage. That's what I see. So. Oh yeah. Okay. So um, so it sounds like 150 feet from residential, you know, from some sort of a door-to-door -door type uh, marker on that one. Uh, 600 feet, I think, is where the, the majority is laying on, on the other item. Mm -hmm. And then just to leave out churches. Yes. Or, or houses of worship. Well, just leave it as, leave the ordinance as is right now. Way, regarding that kind of, you know. Not not add that one item. That yeah. Except the residential, add that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm saying add the residential. Yeah. So I second that. Okay, well, hold on. We need, um, whoever makes the motion, I want you to read the entire ordinance, please. And it'll be ordinance number 187. Mayor, 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 before we get to oh, sorry. the ordinance, let's, uh, let's let Erica read into the record <laughs> Smart. the language for uh, uh, 150 feet from, from residential or from homes. We've got to read that in, including the, the section where it will be located. Okay. Erica, are you prepared to do that? Uh, yes. I just want to clarify whether it's 100 feet or 150 feet. <laughs> I think I'm comfortable with 150 feet, um, and that, I think that's a good good balance. Yeah, that's a, a, a good catch, Ben. Doesn't. Mayor, if I could, before yes, Erica reads that, in, yeah. I just want to make a clarification. Um, it, it should go into 17315070 in the um, zoning ordinance amendment under locational requirements. That's where the 600 foot uh, distance standard is. And in section B, the way you measure that is a straight line without regard to intervening structures or topography from the nearest point of the building or structure where the cannabis business is located to the nearest property line of the parcel where such use is located. So if we come up with a different standard of that for the residential distance, that's you have conflicting measurement styles so in there. So it's property line to property line, right, Matt? Is that what you're saying? No, it's from the building to the property line. The cannabis okay, then business. I then I would drop it down to 100 feet if that's the case. Okay. If that um, makes if that makes sense, because that way we're not taking into yeah. the, you know, and that still leaves open the places that you know that Joseph and I talked about, where you might have a a house that's on a hill backing up to it, but it's you know as a crow flies uh, up the hill. You know, 300 feet away, but and if you have to drive from one place to the other, it's you're going around the block. But you know that that you know that, that you can you can have that use down in the commercial area down below it. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm good with that. It's just measured on a plat map. They're not going to take into considerations any hills or the topography. It's from property line to property. Right, and that's why I'm saying okay. go a smaller flat. smaller number. 100 feet gets us away from having the issue of the plat map. You know. Knocking out all, every every little available piece of real estate. Basically. Yeah, I'm I'm, fine, I'm fair with that. That's that's good. Okay. So do you need to add one yeah, other thing too? Um, you haven't talked about whether or not as part of the commission's recommendation to expand the definition of youth centers. Oh, I I don't I don't want to now. I, I that we had a lot of back and forth with that, a lot of thought, a lot of everything, and if we if we keep with the intent of. For treating it like a business, um, I think that we, we're going down the right path with the ordinance as it as it is. I like the I think the the, res, the hundred foot residential thing is a, a good idea, a good catch, uh, for the simple fact that I do think that Mission Trail, at some point when we update the general plan, will have you know commercial pieces that we need to rezone identify you know, but I. Um, yeah, a lot of thought went into that. That's my opinion. We put a lot of thought and you know back and forth with this. But Joseph, what's your take on the uh, youth centers or youth? Right. I mean, we at this point we don't have a dance studio, so that's. But I get the point of, of it there. So when they used to have the Hollywood dance, I mean that, that was pretty active. I don't know how active the other places are. I mean, kids can't really be there until after school sometime. So I would leave that open to the good persuasive arguments of the other members of the council. So keep in mind that we have the restrictions in place, the signage, we have more illumination, everything else. As somebody else pointed out earlier, um, 
you can go to Albertsons or Barron's to buy liquor. I mean, it's the, the same type of, th like, it's, it's the same concept, right? So, uh, at a minimum, a kid's not going to, what happened? Okay, you guys still there? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, no, the screen turned off, so it scared me. <laughs> um, anyway, I lost my train of thought now because I got terrified the damn meeting, you know, ended. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that? What's that, Bridget? Those places are busy. We have martial arts studio next to the yoga place. You have the, another martial place right by City Hall next to Kind of Express. I mean, those places are busy. If you go by there after school when kids are there, there's very busy. I, I mean, of course, we didn't agree, but I felt we should include <laughs> <laughs> those too. <laughs> well. I feel like we should include those as long as they are primarily used. And it's not just a, you know, we happen to watch kids here every once in a while. It is a, you know, that's a primary function of that place, whether it's daycare or, um, you know, those other, those other uses. As, as long as it's, if that's a current use in that facility, you know, then I, I get why they, we're not going to have that right around. So I, well, I sort of, I side with the planning commission on that one, Dustin. I, well, I the, the daycares are already included like, in the ordinance. You know, to throw away everything the planning commission inputted on, I, I don't think is you know appropriate either. They, they've got to give some indifference to what the planning commission brought forward. And I do tend to agree with you on churches, and I tend to agree with March on churches, and I, I'm okay with pulling that part out, but I'm not comfortable pulling out the the piece on on childcare facilities. I think there should be some indifference to that. Oh no, childcare facilities are included in the ordinance. They they are, uh, and if I'm wrong here, please somebody tell me. But uh, Child care facilities are legitimately in the ordinance as it's presented right now. That's that's not okay. up for debate. Um, the, I, the, I look at the, the recommendation that the planning commission made as being something like Crab Maga, the, right here in the center. That's not a, a, a you know a child care facility, and I agree, man. I don't want you know it's it is what it is. Uh, daycares are, and we we're using the state definition for daycares. Uh, I look at the. Yeah, I, I I agree with you there, Dustin. Because think about it, where that uh, martial arts studio is at. <clears throat> if somebody like, because there's a vape shop that's around the corner, right? That's been the same um, shopping center. Even if they put a place, I, I know there's not a building there now, but even if they put a place by the Starbucks there, the, the kids are not going to be wandering over to, from the karate place over to the other building anyway i mean you wouldn't want it right next door but i don't know if the 600 feet which means oh we've got something in the center so you can't be on the other side of it i that doesn't seem reasonable yeah and, 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 and daycares are argument. included Erica, when, when these facilities have to have a lobby with no product in it they come in and get checked into and then they go into the actual product room, right erica yeah that's part of the yeah. state rule well so the state to my knowledge doesn't have a rule requiring that lobby but it is in effect because the state requires that minors not be allowed on the premises at all. So the only way a, a dispensary can functionally achieve that is right. by doing that small lobby where IDs are checked up front. And then as a part of our rules, we require that the product not be sort of in facing out in the window like you would see in right. other retail. So it's not visible when if someone were to walk out of the Kramagar place and go next door to the, if the Sprint store turned into a, a facility, they would not see product unless they got their ID checked and they were let into the building. Correct. The, and to that regard, I understand then, you know, yeah, I, I, daycare right next door, no, but you yeah. know, other, other, the other uses they were adding, I guess, I guess I'm with you, Dustin. Okay. And daycares are in the ordinance right now as yep. it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, just so we're on the same page, that was thoroughly discussed as well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, do we need uh, Erica? Do you have enough to read us into what yeah, we're going? Okay. I've, I've, it's pretty simple. I okay. got it. <laughs> so oh. what we'll do is um, add a sentence to the end of paragraph A in section seventeen point three fifteen point oh seventy, and that sentence will read: No cannabis business shall be located within one hundred feet of a residential use. Okay. okay. So 
I guess we're gonna need to make a motion on that. I'll make the a motion along with. Can you read the ordinance too? Yeah. Was there any other piece that we were gonna include, or that's it then, right? Right now, that's what. That's for this item, yeah. We still have to talk the. We still are going to talk the fees for two point two, yeah. That's that's two point two, yeah. But as yeah. far as this goes, the six hundred feet's the current one. Yep. Um, we're not talking about churches and youth centers. Went back to the original definition. Yeah, it's back. Yeah, as presented in the ordinance, yeah. Okay, so uh, that's uh, ordinance number oh, one eighty seven. Thank you, one eight seven. Yes, sir. The ordinance of the city of Wildemar, city of Wildemar, uh, ordinance of the city of council of the city of Wildemar, California, adopting a CEQA statutory exemption pursuant to the, the business and professions code section 20, or sorry, 26055H and approving the zoning ordinance amendment 2020-04, amending the title 17 zoning of the Wildemar municipal code to revi uh, revive sections 17.12.040, dot 17.72.010, 17.76.010, 17.78.010, 17.92.010, and add chapter 17-315, a new chapter to establish, sorry, I got a highlight up here, to establish business zoning and use regulations I guess that's the end of that sentence. There's no period there. Is that correct, Matt? With the changes Erica recommended, or Erica read into the... Changes the, Erica just yeah. read in regarding the 100 foot on residential. Okay. Is there a second? I will second that. Oh, gosh. Okay. Jeanette, can we have a roll, uh, roll call vote, please? Councilmember Benoit? Aye. Councilmember Marbido? Aye. Councilmember Swanson? No. Mayor Pro Tem Moore? No. Mayor Nig? Oh, God. Aye. Motion carries 3-2. Uh, Makes my chest hurt, so you know. <laughs> Motion carries 3-2 with Councilmember Swanson and Mayor Pro Tem Moore voting no. Thank you, Jeanette. Hey, before we move on, thank you everyone for the discussion. I really appreciate that we can do this and not have, you know, daggers come out and everything else. So, Marsha, this is what you and I typically shake hands when we vote opposite. So, here's my handshake. Uh, and let's move on to 2.2. I'm yes. going to find a better chair to sit in next time. <laughs> <laughs> no well, kidding. We still have a second half of that ordinance, right? The number two oh, introduced wow. to the first reading. Uh, yeah. This is ordinance number 188. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I No, I didn't see that. I, I was on the other page. Sorry. Okay. So, let's do that one too. Is there anything else we need to read in for this one, Erica? Or this already has There's everything open? All the revisions were to the first one. There's no changes to this one. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion that ordinance number 188, an ordinance of the city council, the city of Wildemar, California, adopting a CEQA statutory exemption pursuant to the businesses and professionals code section 20, I'm sorry, 26055H and amending title five business license and regulations of the Wildemar municipal code to add a new code section chapter 5.76 to establish commercial cannabis licensing regulations in the city of Wildemar. Okay. Is there a second? I second that. Okay, Jeanette, can you do a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Benoit? Aye. Councilmember Morbido? Aye. Councilmember Swanson? No. Mayor Pro Tem Moore? No. Mayor Nig? Aye. Motion carries 3 2 with Councilmember Swanson and Mayor Pro Tem Moore voting no. Okay. Again, thank you.